So at, at this point, I'll let Iwan and Arlene, I'll let you just describe your situation and, and ask whatever questions you'd like, and we'll do our best to answer answer your questions and provide you with the information you need. Um, yeah, you know, <clears throat> right now I've got that firewood stacked by the road and kind of an eyesore there. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is put that gravel road, come in where the wood pile is and just veer off to the left more. Um, you know, just along the edge of the lawn and the woods right there. Can you tell us your address? Pardon me? What's your address? 15 Swamp Road. Oh, okay. Um, along the New River. So, um, that way there, you know, it'll be away from the road. And I've had, well, a few years back, I, I had firewood cut there and I had a person this was during 4th of July. I had a person just stop, open up their trunk. <laughs> and, up themselves. Know, and I said, hey, wait a minute. I said, what's going on? Well, I was just taking some firewood for a campfire. I said, well, you didn't ask me. And uh, I said, just, you know, take the firewood out. And she left. But, you know, and I, and I think it being a way from the road towards the other side, you know, by the woods there, it would be, uh, it would just look nicer and I could, I could do it up better and I feel better about it, you know. And by putting a gravel road in there, I can drive a truck on there with wood on it and uh, dump it off. And uh, yeah, because he works at log lengths, you know, so I have to have a, you know, truck to drive in, drop the logs off and then back out. Mm -hmm. Drive out, <clears throat> and I want to put a shed. I want to put a shed at the end of that uh, gravel road right there, so I can, you know, s store my wood splitter and things like that in there. That's all it's going to be for. It's not going to be uh, anything, you know, um, elaborate, elaborate or anything. It's just going to yeah. be, you know, get our equipment out of the weather stuff. So. That, that's my plan, sir. Plan is doing. Okay, so I mentioned some of this in my email, so I'll just elaborate now about the uh, the laws and the regulations that apply to that property that you got. Um, so the the Conservation Commission administers a state law called the Wetlands Protection Act, and that's been on the books for quite a long time, but. In the 1990s, another law was passed called the Rivers Act, which amended the Wetlands Protection Act to add uh, a protected area on 200, extending out 200 feet on each side of any perennial stream or river. So basically, all of the land within 200 feet of the Mill River is considered a resource area that is protected under the Wetlands Act. Now, when they passed that, they recognized that there were quite a lot of people that lived within that 200 foot zone or otherwise worked within it. And so they grandfathered sort of existing uses. Oh. So, you know, the fact that you've been, you know, cutting up firewood in there has not been a problem. Okay. Um, but putting in a road is a, is a change in use. Uh, and so it would require you to file with the Conservation Commission and get essentially what's a permit from us before you did that um okay. and that that we can we can help you get through that permitting process it's you know the notice of intent that you would have to fill out is a, a pretty long form but um if for people who can't afford to get a consultant to fill it out for them what i do is you know try to help walk them through the form and, and make sure it gets filled out properly for what you want to do it's good if we first agree on something that we could easily sign off on as a as a commission. So, uh, the the performance standards under the regulations are are fairly strong in that they say that if you could do this somewhere outside of that two hundred foot zone, you have to do that first. So, if you have any practical alternative, um, you need to go with that rather than encroach within that two hundred foot area. 
um, if you have to go within the 200 foot area, there's a limit to how much you can alter. Basically 10% of that 200 foot zone that's on your property, you could alter with a permit from us. But so those are the two main and, and basically have no impact on that land in a negative way for, you know, pollution prevention, storm damage prevention, flood prevention, wildlife habitat, fisheries, a whole bunch of things that are protected by the law. In in application, the way it usually works out is, is if that if you're if you've got land that's not basically forested or natural, like you have open land there. Uh, there are ways of giving getting you a permit to do something. Uh, generally, what we do is we look for a trade off somewhere else so that on balance, it's uh, it's a benefit for the environment and it allows you to do what you want to do. And in most cases, what that entails is if there's an area that's been mowed that you don't have to mow and you could easily give up near the river, you can trade off a strip of land that you let go wild again for permission to develop some other portions of that riverfront area, that 200 foot zone. So there are other things you could possibly do, you know, try to control some invasive plant species that might be on the property or fix some other problem that, that would improve the environment for, you know, especially around the wetlands and, and the Mill River itself. But, it, you know, it will require a certain amount of discussion about what you want to do and what you could maybe throw in on the other side to sort of even the scales. Um, but that generally is the way that we've worked with people who want to do stuff within that riverfront area. And, and in most cases, we've been pretty much all cases, we've been able to figure out some way to, to make it work. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean that it isn't a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, we recognize that. Uh, and we did not write the regulations. We we're just charged with implementing them. But in general, we try to do it in, in a way that, that doesn't put people out if we any more than it has to. Wow. And uh, so I don't know if anybody else from the commission wants to chime in a little bit after my I was just trying to think of, uh, like, if we just had like a simplified map, I'm trying to think of, they don't have to go through the whole process of like getting the whole site survey, but I was trying to think of generic, like top of bank to 200, you know, 200 feet, right, Scott? It's from the top of the bank. Yeah, from the top yeah. of the bank. Yeah, and just about 200 feet. Yeah, and just get a general idea with just a simplistic map might, you know, give us an idea what, you know, the overall project. So you wouldn't have to like hire a consultant to survey the whole area, I don't think. We measured uh, from the river uh, to, well, I don't know if you're aware of where the snowmobile trail goes to our property. Mm -hmm. um, so from the river to that, it's about 170. And then another 30 feet up is where the logs are now piled. Oh, nice. So that would be 200 feet. Okay, so you just be probably just on that. Oh, so that's good. You're just on that 200 foot. You're not closer to the river. That's ideal. So that's good too. And yeah. and then, uh, like Iwan said, the gravel road is going to curve away from the river too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it just that. be closest to where we want to, you know, have the accent be on coming off the paved road. Yeah. So that be the closest. So it's going to be a circular. River. You know, it's going to come in like this and stop. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's some, if if the impact within that 200 foot zone is relatively small, you don't necessarily need to make a trade off for that. You, you're allowed to do alter up to 10% of that, that's that riverfront area that's on your property. And so if it, if you have to cross through it in order to get to another spot that's outside of 200 feet, um, you know, that's a little easier for us to permit than if you're you know, disturbing a much more significant part of that that zone. Yeah, I'm just I pulled up a, an aerial photograph and I can share it with everybody so that people get a sense of what the property looks like. Okay. So here's your wood pile. No. Yeah. And the river over here. And so you're talking about uh, 
it's is this land back here is that yours or is that someone else's that's someone else's that's yeah. a big field yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah that's a big field yeah so you're, yeah. you're basically up to this wood line is that where you're working well, yeah that's across that's in back of our house yeah we're we talking in front of the house, in front yeah, of the the house. house. right yeah. So you're talking about going here and cutting around back? Not there? that far. No, not that far. No. Okay. It's going to start here and it's just going to go to the here. Pines. To the big, to the big uh, right pine. across from the front lawn. Yeah, right there, right in there, with a big right pine. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so you're talking about that. just coming in this way. Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah. That's the way I want to come in. Yeah. Not it won't okay. be that long. Yeah. So it's going to start from it's here six, and right there. I can't see yeah. it. Pinned. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's about 110 feet. Can you see my little arrow? No. no. If you can on the zoom. No, but what you can do sometimes is um, there. Uh, there's like this little annotate. Uh, I have to, yeah, up on the bar. There's this annotate button, maybe at the bottom for you. You can do that. If you click on that, then it allows you to have like a little pencil and you can draw on my drawing, but um, this is the town's version of Zoom. So I don't know if that feature, if you can see that feature or if it's just me, but see, yeah. I can draw pictures in here. Yeah. Well, you've got, you, you pretty much have it. You're yeah. Yeah, you have it. Pretty, yeah. Right yeah. Here. So basically from about, it looks like the riverfront area runs sort of like this. And so it looks like you would need just a, to get in a little bit of it in. And um, do you own up to the river? Yes. Well, our land goes right. Our, so halfway into the river. Yeah, half our land is the middle of the river. Middle of the river, right. Yeah, so it goes up. There's the actually river. a uh, so go, plank right, in there. Yeah, in the middle of the river. And then it comes from the middle of the river all the way up to... Um, our house up here on a corner. Two point six acres, I guess. And uh, okay. so that would mean that, like, all of this here would be considered riverfront area, and then you could disturb an area that's equivalent to one tenth of that area without it being a big problem. And and the fact that you're going to have it in this area that's already cleared, it shouldn't be difficult for us to permit it. Okay. But, what I'll have to do is send you the form and the instructions. Okay. You can do as much as you as you can to fill it out, but eventually you're going to probably need my help. So you can either just email it to me, and I'll take a look at it, and I'll I'll sometimes I make some changes to it and send it back to you, or sometimes we can have another Zoom meeting and talk about it. Um, the the other thing is is that they normally want to see a plan. And, you know, for a lot of projects, that means getting a, a surveyed plot plan and it's, but it doesn't always have to be that way. And so this, this image here just comes from the web because there's, there's this mass mapper website, which is the state's website for showing all different kinds of information, including photographs. So sometimes what you can do is just take a screenshot of that and draw right on the, 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 the photograph and show us what you want to do based on that. And, and if it's something that's not easy for you to do, you know, we could, I, you can tell me what you want to look like and I can draw it for you and send it to you and you can put that in your application. Okay. Yeah. But um, so yeah, the, the answer is you would have to apply for the permit, but you should have an expectation that you could get that permit to do what you want to do. Um, and anybody else from the commission want to chime in or anybody have a question or want to see something different? Where would the shed be? Is it in the circle that Scott's? Right in the pines right there, right on the edge of the lawn. Yeah, where that circle is. Where yeah. that circle is. Okay. Kind of um, towards the road more. Well, it'd be, yeah, it would be where the existing pile may come off. It stopped right there in the plane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not too far. So they would have to do a full NOI, Scott, because it's the Rivers Act, not an RDA or Yeah, it's in the resource area. It's not mm -hmm. alongside. So yeah, we would have to 
uh, we'd have to issue an order of conditions for that. Yep. Let's see. All right, do uh, you have any other questions or? We are helping the environment because we have honeybees. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got this nice forested strip along the river too. That's always helpful for keeping the river healthy. Yeah. And uh, in this stretch of the river, there's actually a lot of endangered species that live in there, uh, including a, a, a freshwater mussel that's found only in half a dozen sites. 20 years ago that they were finding those mussels in there. Right, right. And this is like, last time I looked, it was the sixth largest population remaining of that dwarf wedge mussel anywhere in the world. So wow. there, there aren't very many healthy populations left. And this one in the Mill River was estimated to be somewhere between like 500 and 900 individuals. So it's a pretty pretty decent population. It's not huge, but it's bigger than a lot of them that are out there. So okay. we're happy to keep the Mill River in good shape. And that, that's why we're here. Um, that's what we're trying to do. That's yeah. what I'm trying to do. Uh, so Scott, what are you going to send us the application to fill out? Or? Yeah, I'll send it to you. I'll use the email address that you use to contact me. And okay. I'll attach it. There'll be one f document that's the form, and wow. then there'll be another one that's instructions for how to fill it out. But even then, there'll probably be questions. The The people who wrote the law did not really pay attention to like what lay people might, right. might use for language. And so they came up with all this sort of weird names for things that that uh, it bothers me, and, and I'm used to it. Um, right. So you're... You can always email me with questions. If you get to a place where you've collected a whole bunch of questions, you can say, can we have a Zoom meeting so we can talk about this and we can do this again? Um, if it's necessary, I could, or if it would be helpful, I could come out to your site and, and meet you there on site one of these days. Okay. Yeah. Once you file that, all of us are gonna come visit your, your property. So we'll have a site visit where we'll all come out and take a look at it before we have the meeting where we'll uh, we'll discuss it and then make a decision. Okay, sounds good. All right. Well, I'm glad you were able to come tonight because that's a lot yeah. easier to explain this way than to try to write a long email message and send it back to you. Right. Yeah. Very good. And that Very was helpful good. with that map. Right. It was. Hearing yeah. you. Yeah, right. it's good. Technology can be helpful sometimes. That's yeah. good. <laughs> well, All right. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Have You're welcome. Day. You have a good evening. You too. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Um, so the only other thing that came up was that message that I forwarded to you um, about pollinator habitat and where people might put it. Andy uh, responded and said, why not? How about behind the library? So we can certainly put that on the list. Um, do people have other ideas that we can write back and? Did it have to be? I was just wondering. The question was: Did it have to be town-owned land that they can only use, or is it any land? And I think they were also talking about other people too. Uh. I haven't mentioned hedgerows, field borders used to protect farmland. Hard yeah, to narrow since, down because yeah. we have so many areas like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Hurlehe Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are areas on the margins or that that aren't in the ball fields themselves. Um, uh, I, know, I guess maybe the elementary school would be another place to think about. And so would it be, um, it would be marked so people would know what was going on there? Because that seems like a an important part of it. I imagine so, but I don't know. I, I only know what was in that message. So I don't have any additional information. 
Yeah, it wasn't wasn't clear whether this is some kind of formal initiative or if there's funding behind it or right or exactly it's what it is. I mean, it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. Yep. Um, you know, sometimes it it turns out really nice. You get sort of a wildflower garden, and you don't have to mow it, and you you don't have to burn the gasoline as much during the summer to maintain it. And you know, there are a lot of places where maybe they don't need to mow quite that much, but you can use some kind of a pollinator garden as a way of keeping it open. Um, so I would just say, if you there's no reason why it has to go through me. So if you come up with a really brilliant idea. You can email uh, Sylvie directly mm -hmm. and just let her know. And, you know, I'll pass along at least a couple of suggestions so she doesn't think we're ignoring her. Uh, but I do think there's probably lots of opportunities and it's just sit for a minute and think of them. Mm -hmm. Like we should cover the entire cemeteries with with wildflowers, right? Actually, people do that anyway, but in a more formal way. All right, well, then the other item of business, the only one that actually made it on the agenda was to review the minutes and, and approve the minutes. Did anybody see anything glaring? No. All right, all in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. All right, thank you. Anybody have anything else to talk about? Anything going on that you've seen or heard that you wanna bring up? No, no. We were trying. Oh, oh, I was just going to say, I'm I'm still very curious what uh, Mike Bartlett's doing with the um, sand pit on Westbrook Road, but it's it's not in our area. Mm. But he's doing a lot of work in there. He's it looks like he's building a mountain. Of what? Dirt. Just dirt. It's not like bricks and things. At one point, he was storing bricks there, wasn't he, or something? Yeah, like he that. did get in trouble for, for that. But no, he's he's just building up a giant pile with a lot of uh, equipment and dirt hauled in. Yeah, yeah sounds like something my grandson would love to do. Uh, <laughs> but he couldn't afford it. He does it on a smaller scale, but he probably dreams of growing up someday to be able to use real trucks and do the same thing. <laughs> I just have one bit of past uh, cross uh, committee thing. We're just through the CPA. We're trying to figure out with all the funds we have, if we can use, because since we're an agricultural committee, if we can use some of those funds to support the agricultural side of things, you know, besides um, uh, you APRs. Know, the APRs, you know, yeah, maybe with like management, like you said, like maybe like I said, with this flower garden or just like, land share or something we're trying to figure out maybe through seat you know getting uh judy was trying to get contact cisa if they could do something you know mm -hmm. besides just like i said doing the APR as we have this funding maybe they could do like seeding or like winter crops or something you know to support right. the agricultural committee <laughs> yeah that's a good idea i don't really know much about the details of cpa so mm -hmm. there may be some leeway there i don't know yeah so many rules we have to follow to there so yeah <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think maybe we may be done. Well, thanks for coming out. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to. And it's too bad that uh, things aren't easier to get together for the December end of year gathering. But uh, if anybody has any ideas of how we can celebrate. The last meeting of 2023 feel free to to chime in we could still go to the inn yeah good mm -hmm. yep but one in real life meeting for the year yeah or we could you know we could meet by a zoom and then reconvene at the end for for just a a brief social gathering sure you want to do that yeah that'd be sure. good sure okay. All right. Well, sounds good. Um, it looks like we'll have uh, a notice of intent to consider for at our next meeting 
um, Smith College has submitted an NOI. Uh, they've been doing some reclamation work on the property up there, uh, trying to beat back the invasives and reestablish forest in certain areas. So re basically retiring some of the fields and letting them grow back to forest. Um, you know, Paul Wetzel had asked some questions about jurisdiction and what they can and cannot do. So he has some guidance on that, uh, when he needs to file and when when he's free to go ahead with his work. And so now apparently he's come up with some ideas. I uh, haven't yet looked at the NOI. It came in electronically just a day or two ago. So I'll forward it to you. And then, you know, we'll have to set up a site visit uh, probably after Thanksgiving um, and uh, see what they're up to. Sounds like it might be something good. Good. All right. Well, until our next meeting. Thank enjoy you. The fall weather out there. Yeah. We'll see you on, in December. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Bye. All right. Bye.